I prefer before start uh, talking about the defects to give you a couple of minutes about the formation of the interatrial uh, septum because I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna start with the defects in the uh, septa. You know we have the right atrium and left atrium and we have a septum in between known as interatrial uh, septum and you know guys we have two ventricles and there is another septum there known as interventricular septum anyway guys let us simplify it this interatrial septum because you know we have two atria open on each other then the septum the interatrial septum will start to grow it starts to grow from the roof of the primitive atrium so this septum that grows down is the primary one that's known as septum primum you know sometimes they pronounce it as septum primum so i prefer to use septum primum so this is the septum primum like a crescent shape that descends all the way down until it reaches, guys, the endocardial cushion. So then this septum primum will fuse with this cushion. Somebody can say, okay, but what about the opening of the heart? Because we know that the fetus needs a blood, oxygenated blood that comes from the mother through the inferior vena cava. Once it reaches the right atrium, the baby needs the blood to shift it to the left atrium. So, keep in mind, guys, that during the fetal life, we need an opening here. Otherwise, the fetus will die. So, always we need for this opening. But somebody can say, okay, but you mentioned that there is a septum that's growing here, yes. Septum, or known as septum primum, will continue down until it reaches the endocardial cushion. And there is an opening here, but this opening will close. But before it completely closed, there is another opening will open here, guys. So this septum primum, let me show you guys. Here is the septum primum that grows from the roof of the atrium down until it reaches the endocardial cushion. But stop here. There is a small opening here. What's the name of the septum? The septum is septum primum. And the foramen? The foramen primum. So this is the first foramen, guys. But this foramen will close, as you see here, by the fusion of the septum primum to the endocardial cushion but how is the heart of the fetus compensate for this closure yes while guys uh, let me show you while the septum while the foramen primum closed there is a kind of fenestration here up to create another foramen so this foramen Foramen primum becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and the close at, at the same time. There is a fenestration here created. Then this fenestration become larger and larger to create another foramen in this wall, in the septum primum. This foramen is the second one. So it's known foramen secundum, not foramen primum, foramen secundum. So, this is the foramen secundum. But what else? Do you think we have another wall? Yes, we have another wall. Another, uh, another wall other than the septum primum. We have septum secundum, the second wall. That also descended from the roof of the atrium, guys, down to close, partially close this opening. Let me show you in the next... So this is again what I'm trying to iterate that this is foramen primum and this is foramen secundum. Once this close, this will be ready to shift the blood from the right to the left. But guys, I want to let you know that 
don't be confused if you see osteum primum. I know. Look, guys, the osteum is the same as foramen. It's up to you to use foramen primum or foramen secundum. And also you can say osteum primum, osteum secundum. So foramen is the same as osteum. Anyway, so guys, uh, here we have another wall ready to uh, uh, grow down in order to make like a valve, to make this foramen like a valve with the septum primum. Let me show you. Here we go. This is the septum secundum that grows down, guys, to create a kind of a valvular foramen uh, form. So the, 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 the foramen now with the septum secundum, it becomes like a valve because this is the lip of the valve and this is the lip of the valve. So, so guys, by this way, this foramen of this creates a kind of a foramen oval with, with the like a valve, right? So it should be open and persistent because if it's closed, the blood will not shift it from the right to the left. So we need it. But guys, uh, let me uh, give you a, uh, you see this area, guys? This fossa, this will be fossa ovalis, in which the floor of the fossa formed by septum primum, the floor of fossa ovalis, the floor formed by septum primum, but the edge of the foramen, this, the edge of the foramen formed by the septum secundum, the second one, and it's known as limpus opus ovalis. Anyway, guys, now I can start, sorry, I can start, guys, with the um, first defect in the heart, in the septum of the heart. And it's in the, it's a defect in the interatrial septum known as atrial septal defect. In the uh, conditions and the hospital, they don't use atrial septal defect. Okay, they will use ASD or VSD, ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect. So, the ASD guy is mostly common in female and Look at this, guys. After birth, the foramen of valley that I showed you guys here, this should be closed after birth, right? It closed, why? Somebody can say, you know, why closed? Because you have guys here, the septum primum, which is like elastic and membranous part, and the septum secundum. And after birth, after the first breath, the pressure in the left atrium increased and becomes larger than the right. So this pressure, blood pressure will make a kind of a pressure on the septum primum against the septum secundum. Then they will adhere to each or fuse to each other and then it will be closed. Now, guys, should be like this. So the fossa should be just a remnant fossa ovalis. There is no foramen. So this is normally after the birth. But guys, sometime the foramen uh, will stay open, like in this case. It's small, I know. So this foramen, foramen ovale, I mean, this foramen, guys, that was here, is still open and it's known as patent foramen of valley. What do you mean by patent? Patent that means still open. To just to know, guys, that this foramen, patent foramen of valley, especially when it's very small, like a prop size. Sorry, I don't know what's not working. When it's like a prop size usually cannot be noticed and sometimes it has no significant uh, clinical effect. So just ignore 
right? Usually it closes by itself, but sometimes, even if it persists, um, it will have no significant effect. But anyway, in this case, it's open and it's very common. This is the most common form of atrial septal defect. It's known as patent foramen oval. Okay, what's the cause? The cause is mainly because of the uh, incomplete adhesion between the septum primum and septum secundum. There's incomplete adhesion. That means that, that will lead to shift of the blood from the left to the right. But this is not the only um, form or type of atrial septal defect. We have guys four types. You remember the osseum? You can say osseum or foramen. So we have problem with the foramen secundum, one with the foramen primum, one with sinus venosus, and we will have a problem with both uh, both um, uh, septum. I will talk about each type, guys. Okay, guys. Um, I think in the first uh, before a couple of minutes when I started. Uh, the lecture, we, I started talking about the development of the intraatrial septum. Why? Because I know it's going to be a couple of things here. One of the important um, things is the foramen secundum or ostium secundum. So you remember the, um, let me back here. You remember the septum primum, and we said the, the foramen primum closed and foramen secundum open. Now, here's the problem the foramen secundum. Just to let you know that both foramen, both foramen, the primum or secundum in the septum primum, don't be confused. Not in the septum secundum, no, both in the septum primum, either the foramen primum or foramen secundum. So this is closed and still we have foramen secundum. Let us see what's the problem, guys, in the foramen uh, secundum. So there are a couple of uh, things here, guys. Uh, foramen secundum can be in abno usually it's in the location of oval fossa or fossa ovalis. And sometimes you remember the fenestration here when it's created while the uh, foramen primum, while the foramen primum guys uh, uh, closed, the foramen secundum uh, creates a kind of uh, uh, fenestrations. So, uh, so these fenestration guys, if you remember, will widening and widening but sometimes this widening will be like massive and there is excessive resorption uh, and it becomes like larger than needed and this is not the only cause because sometimes the cause because of the short of septum prima because you know the septum prima should be up right so first of all there is maybe uh, abnormal location or excessive resorption uh, or it can be because of the septum primum itself like short that you know creates a kind of a large um, uh, foramen like this for example we have a large oval uh, foramen guys and uh, if you look here to the last one you would see that there is not just short septum primum, there is very short septum primum. It creates a kind of a large um, uh, ostium secundum. So guys, uh, now, if the septum primum, as you see here, uh, didn't diffuse with the endocardial cushion, this will create you remember the foramen that was called foramen primum, and it will continue open and shift the blood from the left to the right. So this uh, foramen will be known as patent foramen primum, right? So it's inferiorly. So if this is the wall, guys, should you know sometimes you will get 
and if this is the septum secundum so there's a patent foramen oval and sometime you will get a, a, a septum um, uh, the foramen foramen secundum at your septal defect and sometime you will get uh, foramen primum, not foramen secundum, but it would be below, close, close to the uh, endocardial uh, cushion. So, in this case, guys, uh, the uh, problem was created because of the failure uh, of fusion between the endocardial cushion and septum primum. So, if the septum primum failed to fuse with the endocardial cushion, this will keep the foramen primum patent and open. But sometimes, guys, we have another um, a defect caused by uh, sinus venosus. You know, guys, maybe that the sinus venosus, however, in general, it retains the blood to the atria and in uh, during the empyreonic life uh, say this is the atria so in the middle of the atria there is an opening for the sinus venosus this opening was in the center then when the blood shifted from the left to the right this opening also opening of sinus venosus will be shifted to the right this is i think um, covered in embryology but anyway, so this opening will be become like in the right atrium, as you see here, guys, in this figure below. So let me maximize this. So this opening, it creates like a valve. It has two valves, right venous valve and left venous valve. So the left venous valve, guys, contributes to the formation of the septum secundum. Here, guys, this is septum. So the septum secundum formed by a contribution from the um, left venous valve, as you see, guys, uh, here. So failure, guys, or incomplete absorption of the sinus venosus into the right atrium there's a failure um, in the absorption of the sinus venosus there, there will be abnormal septum uh, secundum. So, in this case, guys, look at it here. It's mostly in the most superior part of the septum and usually missed by physicians. The last type of atrial septal defect is the known as common atrium. So look at the right atrium and left atrium, guys. They are open to each other. There is no septum in between. There is failure to form a septum primum and septum secundum. This will lead to um, uh, create a kind of common atrium. The same idea, I would say, with ventricles. You know, the interventricular septum, where there is a failure to form the muscular and membranous uh, part of interventricular septum that means there is no septum there's you you have to expect a uh, common uh, ventricles but this is another story so the treatment uh, when the foram is large they usually uh, they tend to use the surgery and put like a patch uh, on it to close it but they also can get into the foramen through the femoral vein and the right atrium to the opening, guys, through the catheter. But like a device, guys, like um, an umbrella, this is the foramen. They will put a device here and a device here and they close, and they will close the opening. Of course, there are other choices as uh, we are in 2021, guys. Now, that was about the, uh, the fix in the interatrial septum. But what about the, the fix in the ventricular septum? Yes, you know, guys, that the 
interventricular septum has two parts, membranous part and muscular part. Most commonly that effects occur in the membranous part. And if it's minor and small, um, uh, it will close by its own or spontaneously, I mean, and no need for intervention. But if not, of course, it needs uh, urgent intervention. Um, uh, I mean, when the hole uh, is not exist at all, the alignment. So, guys, uh, somebody can say how the membranous part formed. Well, guys, do you remember? I think you remember the. Uh, let me go back here and show you. This part. Do you remember the endocardial cushion here? So the endocardial cushion, guys, participates in the formation of the membranous part of interventricular septum, plus the proximal part of pulpus cordis also contribute to the formation of the membranous part of uh, interventricular septum. So when there is a failure in the formation of membranous part of interventricular system because of uh, failure of um, uh, endocardial cushion or the um, proximal part of pulpus cordis. So you would expect a ventricular septal defect. That means there's a mixture of the blood between the two uh, ventricles through this hole. Now also the um, um, a primitive ventricle, guys, merely contributes to the formation of the muscular part of the ventricles and interventricular septum. Now, uh, I want to make sure that uh, I'm not talking to myself. Okay. So, guys, if there is over cavitation, over trabeculation, or excessive trabeculation, over cavitation, or excessive trabeculation, this sometime will erase this, the, the muscular part of interventricular system. You know there is a trabecular kernel here formed and papillary muscles, so this is cavitation and trabeculation sometimes will be excessive that will, um, uh, uh, will participate in uh, uh, disappearing of this, uh, or this part of the interventricular Septum, I mean the muscular uh, part, and usually it accompanied by transposition of the great arteries. Don't trust yourself. I will let you know about the transposition of great arteries. But this is just to uh, to know about the ventricular septal defect. Guys, try to use the abbreviation. In the hospital, they do use atrial septal defect. No, they use atrial septal defect. ASD. They say, we have a patient with ASD. We have a patient with VSD, ventricular septal defect. Okay, guys. I will shift to another defect. This defect, guys, would be in another septum. Let me remind you with the heart tube that was like this, guys. And the upper part was there was, um, there were three, five swellings. One, two, three, four, five. These swellings, that was truncus arteriosus, pulpus cordis, ventricles. Now, guys, the atria and sinus venosus will be shifted to the back once the heart becomes like a U shape and S shape, right? Okay, now the truncus, oh, that should be covered by embryology, but okay, uh, just in two minutes or one minute. Guys, the truncus arteriosus here, the truncus arteriosus should be divided into aorta and pulmonary trunk. Of course, the truncus arteriosus and the upper part of pulpus cortis here. So there is a red truncal ridge up because truncus arteriosus so there's a ridge they will grow guys and there's bulbar ridge 
And once they uh, grow, they create a kind of a septum. Look at it here. This septum is known as aortico pulmonary septum. It should be in the middle. If there is a truncus, I will talk about it. Uh, let me take the truncus arteriosus and the upper part of pulpus cordis. So, um, this 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 um, septum should be in the middle and should be uh, spiral and exist from the beginning. So it should be first exist in the middle and the spiral. Look at it here is like 180 degree um, rotates on itself. That's why, guys, in the adult, you see the pulmonary trunk, follow the pulmonary trunk, that's anteriorly, right? And the aorta goes posteriorly. So the pulmonary trunk anteriorly and the aorta goes posteriorly. This why, so they are separated from each other by the aorta pulmonary, uh, aortic pulmonary septum. Guys, let us explain the three cases. If this septum is not exist, if this septum is not in the middle, if this if this septum is not spiral, okay. So the first defect will be persistent truncus arteriosus. This is the truncus arteriosus. Let me remind you, this is the truncus arteriosus, not divided. Why not divided? Because there is a failure to form the aortico pulmonary septum. So the septum does not exist. So this, the truncus arteriosus will be persist. That means a single and continue one tube, one vessel. And in this case, you will see the aorta and pulmonary trunk, uh, or the ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk, they share the same uh, uh, part. So this is the truncus arteriosus persistent trunk, and it's overriding the um, both ventricles. Usually, the persistent truncus arteriosus accompanying with ventricular septal defect, guys. Okay, that's in case failure to form the aortic pulmonary septum. So, but the septum um, is uh, not a spiral. So, if it's not a spiral, that means you will you. You will not expect the pulmonary trunk to be uh, anterior and the aorta posterior. And you will not expect that the pulmonary artery will take a blood from right ventricle and aorta from left ventricle. So, no, you will not expect that because there is no rotation. It's not a spiral. That means there is when there is abnormal rotation or malformation of that septum, there will be something called transposition of a great arteries. TGA, guys, you will see the aorta takes the blood from right ventricle, which is wrong. And the pulmonary trunk takes the blood from the left ventricle, which is also wrong. So there is a transposition, changing in the position of those arteries, guys. And Usually, this creates a kind of a cyanosis for the baby. That's why babies with transposition of the great arteries, they known as blue babies, because they are really uh, have a cyanosis. So we mentioned that there is no septum or it's not spiral, but sometimes it's not in the middle line. So not in the middle, sorry. So that means there is unequal division. Look at the big. Aorta and very smaller, um, very small pulmonary trunk. So it's very small. So there is this pulmonary stenosis in this case, pulmonary stenosis in the orifice, in fundibulum, and in the valve, the blast to the trunk itself, as you see here, because the truncus arteriosus didn't divide equally, it divided in this way. Right? So the pulmonary trunk is small, and the infundibulum is small, and the valve as well. So uh, these two types can be pulmonary valve stenosis, like in this case, and infundibular stenosis as well. 
So, no, this is simply hard to forget that. Another defect, guys, which is also, I would say, uh, common with, uh, I would say, poor prognosis and uh, mostly um, uh, babies died, but they, you know, because of the uh, distribution of the cells, I think they can treat it uh, quickly uh, these days. So we have four deformities, four defects in the same heart, tetra. Tetra, that means four. The, sci the scientist, um, the name of the scientist was Fallot. So this is a tetralogy of Fallot. What we have in this heart? Guys, we have, first of all, pulmonary stenosis. This is the first one. And because of the stenosis in the pulmonary um, valve, you would see, guys, that there is overload on the right ventricle. It creates a kind of hypertrophy. So there is a hypertrophy of right ventricle. Okay, what else? We have overriding of aorta. This is the aorta that over overriding the... Uh, um, so this is the aorta that overriding the two uh, ventricles. So the aorta takes the blood from both ventricles. What else, guys? We have a ventricular septal defect. Because of the ventricular septal defect, the aorta can take blood from both ventricles, which is not correct. So these are the four defects. Quickly, we have pulmonary stenosis. We have a hypertrophy of the right ventricle. We have ventricular septal defect. And we have overriding of aorta. Overriding, yani aorta, for uh, two ventricles. And also, tetralogy of palate is one of the heart defects that uh, uh, causes uh, cyanosis, as you expect a uh, uh, blue baby as well. So we have uh, transposition of the great arteries, and we have a tetralogy of palate. Both they um, create cyanosis and causes uh, they cause uh, sorry um, cyanosis and blue uh, baby. Now, guys, you asked me many times, I think, uh, before a couple of lectures about the patent ductus arteriosus. Let me see how many slides we have. Okay, we are about to finish. So let us um, uh, talk quickly. You know that during the fetal life, uh, when the uh, oxygenated blood comes from the mum to the right atrium, then it shifted, uh, guys, through the uh, foramen or valley. But some of the blood passed to the... Uh, uh, some of the blood pass to the right ventricle, then from right ventricle should be, I know, here is the diagram, there is um, transposition of great vessels, forget that. So the blood will be go to the uh, uh, pulmonary trunk, uh, but the lungs are non-functional, so it doesn't make any sense. So the blood will be returned through this vessel, through the ductus arteriosus. This is not a truncus, this is a ductus. Huh? Don't be confused. This is ductus arteriosus. So the blood will be back, the oxygenated blood will be back from the uh, pulmonary trunk to the aorta, then to the body. So after birth, the ductus arteriosus, there is no need for that because the lungs are functional. So the blood can go to the uh, lungs and this will shrink directly after birth guys and it becomes like uh, a ligament known as ligamentum arteriosum so the ductus arteriosus becomes ligamentum arteriosum now in some babies uh, it will not close and it will uh, continue be you know because if the baby has more than a congenital anomaly so you will expect some most of these um, uh, defects can cause the ductus arteriosus to keep open. And it's known as patent ductus arteriosus. This treated guys, these days, they um, get in there through the catheter and they put a device that 
we closed um, that patent ductus arteriosus. Now, there is another case which is um, uh, about the uh, co architation of aorta. Co architation, guys, it means a narrowing of the um, lumen of aorta. Just this till to the left subclavian artery and there are two types one before the this is the ductus right this is ductus arteriosus so if it's before this narrowing before the ductus before the uh, uh, ductus arteriosus it's called preductal but if it's after it like this case it's called post ductal coarctation you know the cause of this narrowing because of abnormal growing of the media and intima layer of the uh, aorta. So they are growing, guys, in a way that's more than uh, uh, normal. So what you expect is uh, this shape or this shape. Okay, guys, here is a, a pre ductal, and this is post ductal in post ductal. Um, coarctation, you expect that the ductus arteriosus will close because of the different of the pressure and different other factors. Treated, yes, can be surgical repair, guys, here, cut it and connect it again or use a, a, a graft like that to bypass this constri constriction or it can add it like a patch here, obviously, and added a patch and dilated, guys. So the last, um, before the last one, is the dextrocardia. Dextrocardia, that means your heart, guys, on the right side. It's common, and usually in the uh, hospitals, they bring such these uh, patients or people for you guys to examine you, the um, your mentor or your examiner will ask you, okay, could you hear the uh, uh, the apex? You say yes, yes, uh, I can hear. You know, you usually put that. You, you have to put the stethoscope usually in the normal on the left fifth intercostal space. But with with those people, it's like a mirror shape. The <clears throat> the apex is on the right side. It's a mirror. Why? Because you know, guys, the normally the heart tube pinned to the right. But if the heart tube pinned to the left, so you will expect that the ventricles will be here on the right. So usually, it uh, uh, this dextrocardia, those patients accompany with something called situs inversus. That means transposition of abdominal viscera. That means the liver not on the right, the liver on the uh, left. The liver will be on the left. The spleen not on the left, it's on the right. The appendix is zaid, which will be uh, on the uh, uh, left rather than on the right. So, and usually discovered by accident. ما بيعرفوا عنه بالهيك بكون نورمال فيري نورمال سم اوف ذيم ذي هاف اولسو اذر هارت ديفيكتس سبيشلي اف ذير از نو سايتوس انفيرسس سو يا سو اند لاستلي جايز ذير از سوري اي سي ذا تايم بات جاست وان مينيت ذا ايكتوبيا كوردس ان ويتش ذا هارت از اوت سايد ذا ثوراسيك كافيتي usually because of failure of sternum and pericardial sac to fuse the lateral fold, so they fail to fuse uh, and from the uh, sternum, so the heart will be outside. Usually, most um, uh, child will, you know, most of them like died, unfortunately, because of infection to the pericardium and the heart and uh, tissue and because of hypertrophy and deoxygenation, decrease of the oxygen level. Look at it, it's like blue. Uh, these so but they can you sometimes they can return back inside the just so guys uh, thank you so much um, and I don't know if you have